Here. Mrs. Vail. Here. Mr. Francis. Here. I'll call on Mr. Francis. Uh, Mr. President, I move to uh, make a motion to excuse John Fair for the evening. Second. Move and second. We excuse Mr. Fair from his attendance this evening. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. He is excused. Invocation this evening will be given by Reverend Jim McGaw, and uh, we'll have to follow that with the Pledge of Allegiance. Please rise. We quiet ourselves for these moments to give thanks. Thanks for a beautiful fall day. Thanks for life in this city we love. Thanks for women and men elected or appointed to make important decisions for us. Thanks for citizens who express themselves on issues that matter to them. May we have wisdom and compassion to live and work together in peace. Amen. 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 Thank you, Reverend McCall. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Council, on your packet are the minutes of the previous legislative session for September 8th. Is there a motion for approval? I'm, I'll second. Been moved and second. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed nay. They are approved. Uh, petitions and communications. We do have one proclamation. I'll turn that over to Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. We do have a proclamation from the mayor, and uh, might I thank uh, Mayor Mavis. Proclamation and recognition of Constitution Week of 2014, whereas September 17th, 2014, marks the 227th anniversary of the drafting of the Constitution of the United States of America by the Constitutional Convention, and whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize this magnificent document and the anniversary of its creation. And whereas it is fitting and proper to officially recognize the patriotic celebrations which will com commemorate the occasions and whereas public law 915 guarantees the issuing of a proclamation each year by the President of the United States of America designating September 17th through the 23rd as Constitution Week. Now, therefore, I, but not myself, Richard K. Mavis, Mayor of the City of Mount Vernon, Ohio, do hereby proclaim September 17th through the 23rd, 2014, to be Constitution Week in the City of Mount Vernon, Ohio, and ask all of our citizens to reaffirm the ideals posed by the framers of the Constitution had in 1787. I hereunto set my hand on behalf of the City of Mount Vernon, Ohio, on the 17th day of September in the year of our Lord, 2014, in remembrance and respect of the 238th year of the end independence of the United States of America. Mr. Thank you. Mr. Francis, if I may, I'd like to say that that this Constitution Day and Constitution Week <coughs> was begun in 1955 by the Daughters of the American Revolution, and it was officially declared by President Eisenhower on August the 2nd of 1956 to uh, recognize that we are a republic under the Constitution and uh, with certain uh, ina inalienable rights as individuals to be free and to live under our own governments. Today, the Constitution stands as an icon of freedom for people around the world. And this time, this week, on our heritage of freedom and coming together to celebrate America is so important. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, and thank you, Mr. Mayor, for, thank you. for doing thank you. that proclamation. Thank you. Mr. Move President. on. One more communication. Okay. The police department tour is set for October 7th at 10 a.m. Or 10 a.m. Okay. 10 a.m. Oh, the 8th was in the afternoon. The 7th was in the morning. Oh. 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Thank you. Uh, council, any committee reports? I see no liquor control licenses. Uh, person speaking on the matter not covered by legislation. Uh, we have no one turned in a, a form. So we'll move on to the legislative portion of the meeting. Uh, council, uh, yes. the packet you, in, in front of you, there's one change to ordinance number 2014. I talked with Mr. Broren on Friday, and he confirmed today that they made that one change. They took a person's name out, because this is actually a law. Every time that person would change, we'd have to redo another ordinance. Right. Ordinance 2014-15. Yeah. Yeah. Any other cha any other uh, things for the uh, legislative agenda? Otherwise, I'll assume it's approved by consensus. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> first, we'll start resolutions for third reading. The first one is resolution number 2014-70. Mrs. Noel. Resolution number 2014-70. A resolution to authorize the safety service director to enter into a contract with the director of transportation for resurfacing and related work on state route 586 within the city of Mount Vernon and declaring an emergency. Mrs. Vail. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is uh, another one of the ODOT um, identified ODOT uh, regulated programs. Uh, I would like to ask, well, first of all, uh, I would like to make a motion to pass a resolution ODOT 2014-70. A second. We have moved and seconded for the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? Mrs. Vail? Thank you, Mr. President. I would like to ask uh, Mr. Glass, last uh, meeting, we talked about the $900,000 for projects over yep. three, a three-year period. Is this in addition to that or no. included in that? No, this is one of those four, and you'll have another one of the four here later in the meeting. So uh, this one's got a price tag of about $85,000, and uh, we'll probably, let's see, it's scheduled for fiscal 17, but is going to sell in the summer of 16, so we'll, it'll have to be in our 2016 budget. So. Okay. And what about the other one uh, while we're at it? Uh, is that included in that 900000 Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mrs. Newell? Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vail? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. Resolution 2014-70 is adopted. Next resolution uh, this evening is resolution 2014-71, Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-71, a resolution approving the appointment of Jim Gaston as an alternate member to the Board of Property Maintenance Appeals of Mount Vernon, Ohio. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to adopt resolution 2014-71. I second. We move and second for the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? Mr. Francis. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I will just turn to you if you have any words to say on uh, behalf of Mr. Gaston. You know, uh, John, thank you for the opportunity. The, in the next four pieces, uh, uh, we are uh, fulfilling uh, the appointments to the Board of Property Maintenance Appeals, and, and Jim Gaston and Jim Meyer, the next one, both of them have uh, agreed to serve as alternate uh, members of that board. Uh, and then the next two that you have, Josh Klein and Marilyn Nagy, will be regular appointments. Uh, as you all know, and sometimes I think the, we, we forget the members of these boards, but uh, the, uh, the city engineer, uh, the uh, health department representative, and the fire chief would be the three permanent and city recognized. Uh, these are public members, serve without pay, and sometimes uh, under the gun, under fire, or whatever. And so uh, uh, as you consider those and as you, the names are uh, put out to the public, thank you uh, to these people as well as others that have volunteered to serve. Thank you, John, for that opportunity. I want to say Jim Gaston is a friend, and I think he'll do a fantastic job for you. Any other discussion? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. Resolution 2014-71 is adopted. Next resolution is Resolution 2014-72. Mrs. Newell. 
Resolution number 2014-72, a resolution approving the appointment of Jim Meyer as an alternate member to the Board of Property Maintenance Appeals of Mount Vernon, Ohio. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. I move to adopt resolution 2014-72. I second. A move and second for the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? Mr. Francis. Uh, Jim Meyer, uh, uh, both Jim Gasson and Jim Meyer probably should say these things, but uh, Jim, uh, Jim and Jim here, this is the first time, as far as I know, this is the first time they've had an opportunity. Both of them embraced the idea with, gee, I, I've never done this before. And that's kind of enthusiastic, it gives yeah, me some enthusiastic uh, feelings that uh, people have the, the, the willingness and the want to jump in and serve. So I appreciate that. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. Resolution 2014-72 is adopted. Next resolution is resolution number 2014-73. Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-73. A resolution approving the appointment of Josh Klein to the Board of Property Maintenance Appeals of Mount Vernon, Ohio. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, uh, I move to adopt Resolution 2014-73. I second. I move and second for the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? Mr. Francis. Mr. Mayor, I'm going to turn to you. And it's not that I'm, I'm just passing the ball, because I, I want to wait till the end of it, because you can't thank these people enough. Uh, Josh Klein, a local business uh, person and property owner, is, is a young man, and he, too, was uh, eager to participate uh, in that uh, uh, idea of uh, being a member of the uh, property maintenance appeals uh, board. So uh, I was pleased uh, again. I, I think uh, I found the people that you've been appointing in the last uh, few weeks. Uh, all of these people are uh, enthused about uh, their service to the city. So thank you. Mrs. No. Mrs. Carl. Yes. Mr. Hillier. Yes. Mrs. Siebel. Yes. Mr. Baroni. Yes. Mrs. Bale. Yes. Mr. Francis. Yes. The resolution is adopted. Next resolution is resolution number 2014-74. Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-74. A resolution approving the appointment of Marilyn Nike to the Board of Property Maintenance Appeals of Mount Vernon, Ohio. Mr. Francis, this is your name. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, uh, I move to adopt resolution 2014-74. I second. Moved. Moved and second for the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, again, and before I even turn it over to the mayor, uh, we've, we've just appointed uh, four individuals, and we sit up here as elected, and we do, we do get paid to show up here. These are folks that, as the mayor's expressed, their excitement to serve the city on a volunteer basis, and, and I don't think we can thank them enough for the for the, the work that they do and the aggravation that they go through and, and the nagging that they probably see. So, Mayor, I'm, I'm going to turn it over to you. Well, uh, 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 Marilyn is a recently retired educator, and the thing that makes me uh, a little excited about that is that I had her in class. So many people know, <laughs> but in my prior life, I was a teacher, and so, so I had Marilyn in class. She's now... Uh, uh, been an educator for many years and uh, lives in our community and has said yes she felt she could do well at this so uh, again uh, thank you for your comments because uh, these people deserve a great deal of, of credit for being willing to step forward and be part of the governance of their community right and and the the mayor appoints them and we approve them so it's it's a close-knit group here we you know with when the mayor appoints we're trusting his judgment on the people that he presents us to who we present to the city. If I could just ask a question real quick. This board will meet as needed, correct? Unlike what we had before, correct? Right. It's as needed. Have we, with as active as Mr. Daniels has been, have we had a need for this yet? Not yet. So everybody that he's called on pretty much knows they've had to do what they needed to do. Yeah, I'll, I'll distribute a, a list to you of some of the things he's done over this last three months. So I'll do that next council meeting. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. The resolution is adopted. That concludes resolutions <clears throat> for third reading. We move on to those for second reading. The first one is resolution number 2014-77. Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-77. 
a resolution confirming the mayor's reappointment of Jim DePew to the Civil Service Commission. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I, resolution 21477 receives a second reading. Okay, this resolution receives a second reading. We'll move on to resolution number 2014-79. Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-79, a resolution authorizing the safety service director to sell by sealed bid a fire vehicle not needed for public use by the city of Mount Vernon. Mrs. Siebel. Thank you, Mr. President. Resolution number 2014-79 is getting its second reading. Thank you. This resolution also receives its second reading. Next resolution is resolution 2014-80. Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-80, a resolution confirming the mayor's appointment of James William Bill Alley to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a five-year term. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. Resolution 2014-80 will receive its second reading. Thank you. It receives its second reading, and that concludes our resolutions for second reading this evening. We now move on to resolutions for first reading. And the first one is resolution 2014-83. Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-83, a resolution authorizing and directing the safety service director to advertise for bids and enter into contract for certain equipment, materials, supplies, and services require, required for the year 2015. Mr. Harrier. Thank you, Mr. President. I motion to suspend the rule for three separate readings. Take resolution 2014-83 to its third and final reading, please. I second. Move and second for the suspension of the rules. Any discussion on the suspension? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Bale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. The rule is suspended. Mr. Hillier? Thank you. A motion to adopt resolution 2014-83, please. Second. And moved and seconded for the adoption of this resolution in discussion. Mr. Hillier? Thank you. Uh, Mr. Glass, it looks like we need to contract for lime, sodium chloride, water meters, <coughs> Water line repair supplies, fuel at station pump, and fuel bulk. Water meters, we buy so many every year, and we replace them as we go. Correct? Isn't that what we're doing? Yeah, there's certain amounts you have to maintain every year, and then we're uh, we're moving toward total automation. Yeah, and that's the one. That's what we're buying now to get us moving towards that. Absolutely. Um, are we still on a certain number of year that we're replacing? A specific number of the. Thought we had a goal of we bought so many, we replaced so many every year. Well, we have about 6,500 accounts, and they were shooting for 1,500 a year, and try to get it done in five years. I'm not sure we're on that schedule right this second. We're close. And then the um, fuel for bulk. That's when we have, we go with our vehicles to a station and buy it, or is that? Well, they're both are on here. Fuel to the station and fuel bulk. Uh, we have several bulk diesel tanks they use for some of the trucks. Four of them. Okay. And then we go for uh, retail gasoline at the, That's the station now we're out there at Santmeyer, but we have used Marathon over the years too. It just depends who wins the bid every year. Thank you. Any other discussion? Yes, Mrs. Bill. I have two questions. First of all, uh, will SALT be under a different resolution or will that salt. be a part of this also? We associated with the Department of Transportation <coughs> for the state purchase of SALT back in the spring. So. Yeah, we oh, already. so we're all set on that. Oh, yeah. yeah okay. we on that. And secondly, Mr. Boren, uh, some of our legislation this time appears to me to be incomplete by comparison to legislation we've always had prior to now. Uh, should there not be a Section 2 on this or, or on this resolution? Ms. Newell. Well, if you're referring to the signature lines. No. Uh, it Generally, is we have a section two that that gives the safety service director it is the authorization the, and direction. The issue is is the you're talking about the lack of an emergency clause. No. And and what's happened over the years is every piece of legislation, whether it was an emergency or not, was uh, stuck with an emergency clause and generally passed with only a single reading. Uh, Mr. Uh, prior to my becoming law director. Uh, Mr. McConville uh, stopped that practice of automatically putting an emergency clause on there unless it's specifically requested when we prepare legislation. And when this piece of legislation was prepared, an emergency clause was not requested. Therefore, none was added. Mr. Warren, that is not what I was referring to okay. because I had long 
felt that we did have the emergency clause on too many things and was very thankful when, when Mr. McConville removed it. My question is with regard to the legislation itself. Section 2 at the bottom generally says that the safety service director is authorized and directed to do whatever it is that the legislation indicates. And that's what it says in Section 1 now, Mrs. Vale. It's always said that in Section 1 or, or in the heading. I mean, I've I written these figures myself. Off so. On that piece, is that we're looking at another piece that's not a, I think no. we just uh, You've just put it all together rather than doing a second section. No. Yeah. yeah, that's what he did. The direction language is in yeah. there. It's in Section it's, 1. Yeah, the service director is authorized to direct it to advertise it's for there. Bids. So it's all uh, right I, since it's all The, the council for together. the city of Mount Vernon safety. Keys. No, is that the, the legislation? This legislation is fine because it's, it's directing fine. the safety right. director. That I just wanted to confirm that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, our only intention was to, to leave the signature lines off. Yeah, no, is that that, that piece? I'm sorry. Right. Is that I understand your question? Now, is that that piece of legislation? Because we don't own something, we're doing something. It's just directing him to do one thing and to advertise. So okay. it only I'm needs not that one section. Before with well, why make it longer section. than that needs to be? Yeah. Any other discussion? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl. Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Thank ne you. Next resolution is resolution number 2014-84. Mrs. Newell? Resolution number 2014-84. A resolution authorizing the safety service director to sell by <coughs> sealed bid a fire vehicle not needed for public use by the city of Mount Vernon. Mrs. Siebel? Thank you, Mr. President. Resolution number 2014-84 is getting its second, our first reading. First reading. Thank you. This resolution receives its first reading. Next resolution is resolution number 2014-85. Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-85, a resolution authorizing and directing the auditor of the city of Mount Vernon to make supplemental appropriations. Mr. Harrier. Thank you, Mr. President. A motion to suspend the rule for three separate readings and take resolution 2014-85 to its third and final reading, please. Second the motion. Been moved and seconded for the suspension of the rules. Any discussion on the suspension? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl. Yes. Mr. Hillier. Yes. Mrs. Siebel. Yes. Mr. Baroni. Yes. Mrs. Vale. Yes. Mr. Francis. Yes. The resolution. The resolution that the rule is suspended for this resolution mr. Hayer thank you motion to adopt resolution 2014-85 second and moved and seconded for the adoption of this resolution any discussion mr. Hayer thank you uh, mr. Scott will explain to you we have a, a donation and a transfer of a grant thank you mr. Harry and council item one is a donation public donation for our park systems in the amount of fifty dollars and we Certainly appreciate Mrs. Rummo in making that contribution. <clears throat> Item two, uh, while it looks like it is a grant, it is actually a D appropriation. There is a minus sign in front of that number. My mistake. And that's okay. <laughs> and uh, the uh, the narrative that I have provided for you, this is a du this is a correction of a duplicate. Uh, you know, sometimes I get to working faster than I realize, and I actually cre created two. Uh, Your mistake. Two, yeah, it's mine. Yeah, <laughs> it was two, two pieces, and we've actually duplicated in what we need to do. So we're going to unwind what we did last meeting, <laughs> and then we'll be back on square one. So that's a correction for uh, for what was your original between the resolution 2014-36 and 2014-68, and we're actually removing 2068. So those are. I think that's items, the sir. first mistake we've ever seen from Mr. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> he's no longer I try, I try to keep the polish and cover the halo. I try to keep right. this covered up if I can. <laughs> um, it's not a bad bad again. Well, <laughs> I, I would assume the city sends a, a letter of thank you when somebody donates like that. Yes, we do. Thank okay. you. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion? Mrs. Noel. Mrs. Carl? Y yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. The resolution is adopted. Next resolution is resolution number 2014-86. Mrs. Noel? Resolution number 2014-86. A resolution authorizing and directing the auditor of the City of Mount Vernon to transfer certain funds. Mr. Harrier. 
Thank you, Mr. President. I move for suspension of the rule for three separate readings and take resolution 2014-86 to its third and final reading, please. Second. We move and second for the suspension of the rules and a discussion on the suspension. Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl. Yes. Mr. Hillier. Yes. Mrs. Siebel. Yes. Mr. Baroni. Yes. Mrs. Vail. Yes. Mr. Francis. Yes. The rule is suspended. Mr. Hillier. Thank you. Motion to adopt resolution 2014-86, please. Second. Been moving and seconded for the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? Mr. Harrier? Thank you. Mr. Scott, we have 11 transfers, and I assume you're standing to explain all these to us. Uh, I'll try to assist <laughs> you as I can, Mr. Harrier and Council. Item 1, uh, for $20,000, we'll move uh, money into the Collection Division, that's the uh, Wastewater Division, for line maintenance and repair. Uh, this is uh, a very unusual circumstance, but they had a major repair out in the Plaza Drive area earlier this year. You have dealt with some of those in funding for some da damage controls that we had out there, but uh, uh, did really tie up a lot of their money early in the year, and we still have a, a balance of the year to finish. So we're going to restore that uh, $20,000 into that line account and keep them, keep them going with our maintenance of our lines. Items two and three combined for $6,100 will provide for uh, funding into the equipment line account for the water treatment plant. And item four for 4860 will provide for uh, funds for wastewater treatment plant for equipment. Uh, they have the need for replacing a vehicle uh, in that uh, in, it's a shared uh, expense between water and wastewater and this will provide fundings to take care of that form. <clears throat> item five for the fire department Chief Christopher has asked for an $8,000 transfer for maintenance of equipment. He indicates that they have had some ongoing maintenance and they do have another uh, uh, ma routine maintenance project coming up still here in the next month. So they'll have some additional funds uh, for that and anything else that might come forth before the end of the year. Six and seven combined is on the EMS side of the fire department for $8,000. Again, they'll sharing in those uh, vehicles as well. Those would be the medics uh, primarily for that. Item eight, uh, burial relief at the cemetery for $1,800. The city is responsible for the cost of, bury of doing a burials on indigent individuals that are residents of our community. And we are near using up the amount of money that we actually appropriated for this year. Mrs. Briscoe has asked for $1,800 more dollars there. Um, item nine for vehicle maintenance in the cemetery of $1,500. And item 10, um, for the uh, water park, uh, adjust the wages for the end of the season. I think we actually transferred some money out of that line account earlier this year, um, and uh, we're $1,215 short of getting a, what we need for closeout this year. And the last item is uh, funding in for in employee final payoff in the general fund for $3,500. We've had two employees who have separated employment in the last month, and we need to make settlement on their termination pays. So. Thank you. Um, line number nine, that came from um, the cemetery seasonal employees. I thought, well, if we're not needing $1,500, I wonder how the cemetery looks. Well, I did a drive through yesterday. Mm -hmm. Our cemetery looks pretty good. Thank you. I mean, it doesn't look perfect, but I, it I can see why there's, I assume we've probably let go of some seasonal help by now because. Mm -hmm. Actually, did, we're still retaining some. Yeah. It did uh, look pretty good. I know yeah. the grass. Growing yeah. and slowed down. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. It looks yeah I think that the staff up there does a, a really good job. Yeah, they do. They're, they're great. Keep things going. Very. Mm -hmm. And yeah. this is this might be a, a strange question, but <laughs> I'm just I was just curious about the indigent people that we bury. Mm -hmm. um, is there an area of the cemetery in which they're all buried? I mean, how does that work? I'm just a little... I, I'm not sure that they have a designated area. Of course, we, you know, we already have uh, plots lotted out. We know exactly where we have open spaces to yeah, do that. Yeah, I know. And, 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 that, and uh, probably there are still some places for purchase, I'm yes. guessing. Oh, yes. plenty of those. Yes, yes absolutely. But uh, yeah, the, the statute does require uh, each community that operates a public cemetery uh, the responsibility of taking care of uh, in terms 
procurement of those uh, who are indigent and that don't have resources. We do communicate and work very well with our uh, funeral directors in our community. Uh -huh. uh, so we're all on the same page together. And uh, they provide that backup material to Mrs. Briscoe. They, uh, beyond the burial part of it, uh, we also then have to uh, place a marker. OK, uh, yeah, that's well. what I was wondering. Yes. Yeah, it, there... that the statute concludes that we do have to actually place a marker as well. So okay. it is identifiable, and it's just like in the other internment in our cemetery. Okay. I would just wonder if there was a certain area or that is just mixed along. I think that <coughs> could very well be mixed. I'm not okay. sure, but I would assume. How many do we usually do in a year? It varies. You know, sometimes it can, you know, it could be 10. Sometimes it's 20. Sometimes it's only, you know, half a dozen. So it just depends. There's a standard rate for that, right? There is. Mm -hmm. Who and pays for the balance of the, uh, the uh, funeral expenses? Uh, we already have a negotiated price with all of our funeral directors. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's a flat fee of nine hundred dollars, and so that's the only charge. Oh, uh, so we're not just talking about purchasing the grave site and the opening no, and closing. No, that's also that the, we absolutely have to provide that ourselves. Everything. Yeah, the only time we get into a, um, an exchange is where somebody wants to step forward and mm -hmm. decide they want to take over the arrangement, so to speak. And when that happens, then. Uh, that door closes for indigency, and now that person picks up the expense, which would then enter the law, uh, the lot, and all the perpetual care and the marker if they want to put right. one. But yeah, those are all cremations too. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was my. Uh, yeah. yeah, they're all cremations. cremations. Cremations are done age 18 uh, up to age 18. <coughs> uh, beyond age 18, cremations are done under age 18. It's a traditional. Okay. Does it have to be a whole plot then when it's cremated? Mm -hmm. It has to be the same as if it's a coffin, huh? It's a regular yep. cemetery plot. Yep. Oh. A few years ago, we had to go out of state to pick up a body. We did. And, and, and we had to pay for the transportation and so we forth did. in order. Yeah. It was in Indiana, I believe. Yeah. person was a resident of the city but had traveled to Indiana and passed away in the state of Indiana, but that didn't preclude us from actually having to take on the expense and everything huh. that went with it. So, yeah. Yep. That's law. Yep. But it was nice. We brought them home. We did. <laughs> Sometimes, and I'll, let me concur with you, just we were talking about lots, but sometimes we don't always have an interment because it's very possible that a family member may come forth and, and request the ashes and, and they want to take those with them. That's acceptable and maybe bury them in some other cemetery with the family or whatever else. And that's acceptable as well, yes. Okay, so as, as, as soon as, you know, as, some, as somebody passes away, and if they have a family member that accepts any piece of the responsibility, then, then that is up front, up front. Okay. If, if the cremation has already occurred, and then somebody wants to take the ashes thereafter, we'll okay. still do the nine hundred dollars to the funeral. To the funeral. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We just don't have the cost of the uh, the lot that we have ourselves, nor mm -hmm. do we have to put a marker up as well. Any other discussion? This is no. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Bernie? Yes. Mrs. Fail? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. Resolution is adopted. Final resolution for this evening is resolution number 2014-87. Mrs. Newell. Resolution number 2014-87. A resolution authorizing and directing the safety service director to prepare and submit an application to the Ohio Department of Natural Resources Division of Water Safety for Funding of Recreation Equipment and Declaring an Emergency. Mrs. Garl. Thank you, Mr. President. I request that the rule requiring three separate readings be suspended and that this resolution um, be taken to its third and its final reading. Second. Moving and seconded for the suspension of the rules. Any discussion on the suspension? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl. Yes. Mr. Hillier. Yes. Mrs. Siebel. Yes. Mr. Baroni. Yes. Mrs. Vail? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. The rule is suspended. Mrs. Garl? I move passage of resolution 2014-87. Second. We move the adoption of this resolution. Any discussion? Mrs. Carl? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I learned that, um, that this is uh, uh, from the, the mayor or, um, before the meeting tonight, that this is an application that they want to submit to try to get some grant money from the ONDR uh, for 
some watercraft materials for uh, the, the yeah, lake Scott, foundation lake and uh, mr zimmerman is oh, here yeah, that's, that's and scott. Uh, mm. scott if you could uh, talk and, and Council, this is kind of late. The application is due October first. I know, and that's so why we're it's, that's why it's we're going to now or never. That's why we're going to move forward with this. Yes, yes. Uh, Terry was helping with me, me on this. I want to apologize for being under the gun. I received this application the sixth day of September, and they said, by the way, it's due October first. And that's the way it is sometimes. And I'm leaving on vacation tomorrow at four. So um, I would appreciate <laughs> that to tomorrow suspend the rule. Four. <laughs> So Tonight. <laughs> hopefully I'll get it done before then. Um, this is actually going to be a joint effort with ourselves and the Park Dex, Knox County Park District. Um, Lori Topman has been very gracious to help out, and to, she's going to try to get this filled out while I am gone. Um, we're going to try to purchase up to um, eight kayaks, but it might be uh, canoes, four kayaks, four canoes, a trailer. Um, if any of you have seen the River Rally, ODNR has their own trailer that they bring down for people to use. This would actually be uh, joint owned equipment through the county and the city. And um, then it would also entail, I'd have to agree to go to training for the safety, uh, safe use of these you know, on the river and at the lakes. So between um, the city and the county with Ariel Foundation Park and all the lakes and then you know the beautiful river we have going right through the middle of our city we thought it was a no-brainer to try to get this money this is a grant for up to thirty thousand dollars and it's a 75 25 uh, grant cool so that 25 percent is going to be 12 and a half city 12 and a half park district i just um, this way we can apply for it and then I'm going to also call ODNR and see if we might get an extension since we didn't get the paperwork at a more timely manner. So. That's cool. So is there going to be some kind of a, 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 pl a place like on the river where you have like a, a canoe access or, or a, a kayak access? That there, there's three of there's, those there's, in the city uh, now. Yeah, okay, um, and I've used some of them, yes. Uh, the mayor and I have talked about this too. We'd like to add another one okay. um, out of Aerial Foundation Park. Okay. Good. and have one there and then we've also talked down the road about a ADA compliant dock for kayaks okay on yes. The lakes yes because that way then they could we'll have a handicapped parking area a five-foot ADA uh, sidewalk and then to be able to, to launch your kayak there okay and, uh, without you know with minimal assistance yeah um, I guess the only thing that as a kayaker myself the only thing that sometimes concerns me is is the constant uh, battle that you have to perform on the on the things that accumulate the, the fallen trees and, and things yes. that that accumulate in our in the Kokosing River. There are some times that uh, through the city kayaking is impossible when you know, the water is low and things are blocking passage. And La last year when we had the uh, we had a windstorm that took out some trees right behind Aerial Foundation. I took a crew up there and we was cutting the treetops out of the river and that's something I want to try to do at least once a year is float to river and, and maintain at least a kayak or a canoe access through it. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, yeah that's so. be. And this is something we could do if we have these, if we have this equipment, <clears throat> it's for training and for the kids. I'm going to try to implement it into the park system, the park program okay. that we have in the summer and everything like that. But we can also use this equipment to help keep the river straightened up so people can enjoy it floating. Yeah. Now, where will the equipment be sheltered? More than likely, um, the Parks District don't really have any area right now, so it'll, it'll be uh, stored somewhere here in the city. Okay. Probably down at my complex down there. <coughs> Five. Okay, and so it will be trailered out from there on certain yes. on certain occasions, or oh well, yeah, yeah, like uh, our Fourth of July uh, okay uh, celebration we're going to have at Aerial Foundation, or uh, when we had the uh, dedication of the lakes, and also you know if we can instill that you know integrate this with our uh, parks program, it would might be maybe every two weeks, you know we could instead of the uh, the kids going out to Hiawatha. And you know, have them bust out there. We'll have them bust to the park, and then they could go and learn how to kayak or canoe. Okay. So, and this grant is, you know, it's also for 
personal flotation devices. Yeah, I was going to say, IDOL. life jackets are going to be, you know. Absolutely, yeah. This is all monitored through ODNR. Good. And like I said, I'll have to go to a two-day training session, and Lori Topman probably will also, and then a couple of uh, my employees will also attend. Them. Yeah, and she's got, a, she's got a park employees that I know that are very good that, that I yeah. go kayaking with that I depend upon whenever I get in yes. trouble. So, <laughs> so it, it's kind of exciting. I'm looking forward to work with them. They're yeah. good to work with. Them. That'll be cool. Yeah. Awesome. Scotty, do I hear you saying that this is all going to be free programming? Um, the, um, um, there is a 25%, which with us going in with the Parks District, it will be a 12 and a half and 12 yeah. and a half percent. Right. I but it's, that. that's going to be a minimal cost. But that's to if citizens, we get, it will be a free use of the kayak. Oh, yeah, they'll be ours. Okay. Yeah, they'll be Do ours that we'll share. Do you have any concerns with regard to our liability and increase in our insurance because of this? No, I don't. I don't see the cost going up very much because I'll be. We'll be trained. We'll be certified instructors to teach this. And I will before you know we go putting a lot of younger children in there. I will check with uh, our insurance writer on all this. Yeah, and there'll have to be some control about like where people go and how right. far yeah, they we'll, travel. We'll have to draw up regulations for their use. And yeah, right. yeah, and oh we'll, yeah. And we'll have a release of liability form that we'll have that each parent will need to sign for each minor or an adult can sign for themselves. Okay. We had that with the the uh, river rally. Are, are um, we not also covered by recreational use exemptions or statutes? Or, uh, yeah, we went possible. through this when we put in the, the uh, skate park out at, at a memorial park, and we, we are indemnified since, since we don't charge anything for yeah. not, by not yeah. charging it. It's, oh, okay. the, it's yeah, likely that we simple. are, but you know, all of these other things help to protect us as well. Certainly. Mm -hmm. But we did take down the sliding board at Riverside Park because of liability. Twelve and a half percent cost to the city. If I did my math, it's about thirty-six hundred dollars, roughly. Yeah. Do you have that the budget now, or do you plan on? Where's it coming from? I, I can I can make uh, make that yes. It, it would come out of it would come out of our uh, our maintenance and repair account line. So we item. still have we're okay there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Again, and this is just for the application. Gotta, right. Yeah. But yeah. you get the application, you got to have the money. Yeah. And. More than likely, we won't go for the full 30. Now, granted, it'll probably be like a 28 and a half, something like that. But yeah, and you can we, get a lot of you can get a lot of watercraft for that. I mean, those kind of I mean non well, yeah. non motorized watercraft, absolutely. Exactly. Well, and and when if we do get approved for this, and and trying to get something for the ADA and everything like that, I think we have a good chance. Also, with having two agencies applying together as, as mm -hmm. another plus, and. Um, this will be a nice service for the community. You know, it's not going to cost anything. We're going to have, every, you know, the only thing it will cost is the 12.5% up front. And then maybe a little bit of maintenance. You'll you know, have your staff. The There'll be staffing. Somebody's going to pull that trailer in and out. And sure. But a lot of times if we're going minimal. to do. Yeah. If we do that on the weekend, you know, like myself or, or Lori will probably volunteer to do that. So it, 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 it'll, it'll be a win-win for the community, I think. Cool. Any other discussion? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. That concludes the resolutions. We now move on to ordinances. And the first ordinance is for third reading, and that's ordinance number 2014-13. Mrs. Newell. Ordinance number 2014-13, an ordinance establishing compensation for the assistant to the city engineer effective August 15, 2014, and declaring an emergency. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move to adopt ordinance 2014-13. I second. Move and second for the adoption of this ordinance. Any discussion? Mr. Francis? Mr. Glass, do you have any words to add? No, I think I know where we're headed. I do too. I don't have any discussion on the issue. Mrs. Newell? Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. The ordinance 2014 13 is adopted. Now move on to ordinances for second reading. We have one, and that's ordinance 2014 14. Mrs. Newell? Ordinance number 2014 14. An ordinance to amend sections 141.01 and 141.02 of the codified ordinances of the City of Mount Vernon relative to the administration of the Shade Tree Commission and declaring an emergency. <clears throat> Mrs. Scarl. I give this a second reading. Ordinance 2014-14 receives a second reading. 
The final ordinance for this evening is for first reading, and that's ordinance number 2014-15. Mrs. Newell. Ordinance number 2014-15. An ordinance fixing the compensation and benefits of certain employees of the Mount Vernon Municipal Court and declaring an emergency. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I request that the rules requiring three separate readings be suspended and that this ordinance be taken to its third and final reading. I second. Moved and second for the suspension of the rules. Any discussion on the suspension? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. The rule is suspended. Mr. Francis? Thank you, Mr. President. I'd first like to thank that uh, the, the name was removed from the ordinance, and, and that just clarifies that we move with the ordinance for the position and not the person. Uh, Mr. Glass, would you like to add okay, We have to, a, a motion on the floor. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, make a motion to adopt Resol Ordinance 2014-15. I second. Good and second for the adoption of this, res of this ordinance. And any discussion, Mr. Francis? Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Glass, you have anything you'd like to add? Only that this comes directly from the judge. <laughs> and Terry's talked to him, I'm sure. So. Uh, yes, this was at the recommendation of the judge. Um, he has replaced uh, this position that was vacated by a previous employee of the court, and uh, this person actually started today. So if we can get an adoption on this, we probably could get the could get them compensated when it comes time for the end of the payroll. So, however, I would concur with counsel that I disagree with your removal of the name. Uh, this is very specific in regards to how this has to be structured. Uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry, I would disagree with your uh, comment that you gave earlier in regards to this particular topic, and that being that um, this is a relatively new environment for council and for the city in regards to uh, council having the jurisdiction on setting compensation for the probation officers within the court. The court can give a recommendation as you have before you, but we have probation officers who are at various pay rates. And this one was specified to be for a specific individual. And that was the reason why the legislation was prepared specifically for that individual. So um, it, it we'll, we'll work with what you guys adopt for us, but please be reminded that when this comes back and next year at some point in time when the court gets ready for annual increases, uh, we'll be actually having names back in again because there are specifics to those positions and those rates because not everyone is at that same level. So. But to me, there should be a, you know, instead, instead of by name, it should be they could have a, a certain level of that position or whatever because in the green book, it, this person's name would be there. Right, and and I, I disagree with that because that, you're putting a specific name into law and and I think I think we're hiring a position and but I think you could categorize the position by a certain level for that position and we do that but we do it by title as well as name is it too late to backtrack on this even though we have suspended the rules it's not necessary at this time mrs. Vales so this is very directly specific because of the date you got set at 20 the 22nd and that's there's only one individual who was hired on the 22nd so we'll be able to follow exactly but what to what you to uh, save uh, some uh, some problems that might occur uh, as we move forward could we then have a piece of legislation uh, soon to replace this that would be accurate to protect um, the variations? I in wouldn't see that necessary. The court the doesn't office. intend to make any changes between now and the end of the year. So then there won't be any other positions in this capacity that will be required either. So I think what right. you have before you is adequate, uh, but it, it could right. have been a little more simplified. We'll work, we'll work with it. it it's right. workable. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Mrs. Newell. Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vale? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. The ordinance is adopted. 
Next, we have remarks and administration. Mayor Mavis. Thank you, Mr. Hawkins. Uh, the, the big question in the last two or three weeks has been when trick-or-treat is. And trick-or-treats on October 30th, that is a Thursday. The 31st is the date we've had it for the last few years, but because football Friday night is usually large in every, fam every uh, community, uh, we've decided to uh, do uh, Thursday, October 30th, and it is 5.30 to 7. It's the regular time that we do trick-or-treat in the city. Also, if you're driving East High Street today, you found that we had a large track hoe and a lot of workers and some cones around and beginning uh, down almost at the, uh, uh, the Park Street section and moving up uh, past uh, uh, the St. Vincent School and Church and then uh, at least up to the county office building, uh, they were sawing asphalt there. They'll be taking out the curb. Uh, so this is the beginning of the city's paving program. Uh, all of this uh, effort uh, is part of that $800,000 project. Uh, uh, the uh, local company from Gambier is the contractor, and uh, so they are taking out the curb. Uh, they'll be putting new curb in that area. Uh, they'll be doing some milling, and then we will see resurfacing in that area, along with other areas. Um, one of the things uh, Cameron has said, and we've said publicly, that uh, you know, if we have an early winter, uh, perhaps some of this area of, con of resurfacing may have to carry over until uh, spring of next year. We're hoping that's not the case. But uh, Worcester Road, I had a call the other day when I was on radio about you, you can't get down uh, McGibney Road to, uh, to Syker Road. And uh, as you all know, that intersection is now being worked on. It's kind of torn up out there. And uh, it will be closed. And Cameron today shared that October the 11th is kind of the day, and that's a Saturday. So uh, perhaps the 10th, which is the Friday, maybe that's the day we'll get McGivney Road reopened again. Uh, there are uh, some folks who use that as their cutoff. They're going to have to alter it. They alternate uh, that for a while, either move over to Syker off of Worcester or move on into Pleasant Street or something like that. And uh, finally, uh, are a couple of things. Uh, July 4th, 2015, Planning Committee, committee held its first meeting. Uh, we had a pretty uh, lively discussion. Uh, that is something that uh, we're going to be working on, and they will meet on a pretty regular basis trying to get that event. This is uh, something they want to be, I think we all want it to be, a community-wide uh, event uh, on July 4th, 2015. And then I thought, just for your information, uh, uh, that's another thing that Scott's been working on, the storage building at uh, Aerial Foundation Park, the lakes uh, uh, area, uh, that was always planned to be removed, so Scott's been working on uh, getting that uh, uh, removed. It isn't down yet, but it, it is part of that whole project there, and uh, so we will be taking that down as we uh, uh, begin to get our plans complete for that. But with that, Bruce, that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Glass? Nothing, sir. Mr. Scott? Nothing further. Mr. Brown? I have nothing. Thank you. Mr. Harrier? <clears throat> Thank you. Um, two items brief. Um, council, we talk about dilapidated buildings and property owners and those type of things, and I thought maybe we should maybe recognize somebody that's doing a good thing to a piece of property. If anybody happened to notice the amount of work that's being done over here on the square and high street, um, I believe it was the Heckler, wasn't it Heckler Drugs that the vacuum places in? Mr. Klein owns Mr. Klein. that property. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. If you happen to know, notice, if you look at the building, the size of the building, the corner it sits on, the, the uh, <coughs> what it does to the square of downtown. I think whenever you see this person, you need to thank him. He is a landlord, and he's a landlord that uh, takes care of that particular piece of property, and we can be very thankful that he's not a landlord that we have to go after and have him clean up a property, especially for where it sits. If you happen to notice, he spent several days and several hours up in the air um, painting and, and patching and that type of thing, so um, I do appreciate it. Um, and another item, if I could just maybe get some clarification. I read in the paper we hired a new uh, parking attendant for downtown, mm -hmm. um, a Dave Postal from Centerburg. Yes. Um, I just, if for some details on I appreciate we getting somebody hired, especially this, this time of year. And you might want to, Mayor, put on the radio tomorrow that the, the uh, employees of downtown Mount Vernon may need to start moving their cars or they're going to get tickets because the... The employees 
and some owners are, are more of a problem on the parking than the actual customer. Um, I stood on the corner of Vine and Main one day and counted four vehicles within eyesight that were all employee-owned vehicles parked, two of them in front of their own front door. Um, with that being said, um, did we advertise for this position, or where did we come apart, come around? The chief interviewed I had five or six different people. Did we have open advertisement, or no? We didn't do open advertisements. We went and looked for people. It's a part-time job. Right? I understand that, mm -hmm. but just in case we're asked, so we did interview some people. The chief mm -hmm. did for this position, and then if I look at what we had budgeted and what he makes per hour, I come out to he can work about 26 hours a week. And that would be... If I'm not mistaken, the legislation says a maximum of 20. Yes. Well, then 20 would be wonderful. If he can, and we're all just parking, right? Nothing else mixed all in? All parking and those hours will vary different days at different times. Just yes, to, it's 20 hours per week. It's not yes. a set number of hours per So we day. plan on maxing that out, though, and vary it, right? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Carl? Nothing. Mrs. Siegel? Thank you. Tanya, I'm confused. There's an email from the mayor telling us that the tour for the police is Tuesday, October 7th at 5.30 to 6.30. That's Green Minutes time. Huh? <laughs> that's Greenwich time. Oh, that's Greenwich time. <laughs> it says GM. Oh, okay. And that translates to 10 o'clock? <laughs> no. That, that's what confused me. It actually goes to like uh, 1 or 1.30. Green. And, and well, you said it was October 7th, 10 a.m., right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it's a Tuesday. Yeah. Who's the deal with Greenwich? Did you see that? <laughs> <laughs> somebody's on vacation. Too could be a setting. Uh, somebody's computer. Are you Mine trying to confuse me, Dick? No, I, I'm not. Uh, <laughs> the the time and actually this is was talked about. I guess I just found out about it. No, today. you know what it is. Okay, it just came to hmm? me because the email here. that you got. I added you all on email. the Google Calendar, and that's the same thing that we've had happen before. It changes the time for some reason. Because if you're not on, like, Google Calendar, I think it's in the settings or some somehow, but it has changed it before, so that's where that mistake is. Oh, okay. So mine says 1.30. Is that? Yeah, mine <laughs> that's wrong, too. <laughs> Yours says 1.30, mine says Okay, so six. note to self, I won't send any more. <laughs> so, it really, from so it really calendar. is. <laughs> it really is Tuesday, October 7th. At 10. At 10. 10. Yeah, that's, it's through 10. Google Calendar. So that's, okay. I won't send any more okay, of those. Okay, it is 10, though. So we, yes, we're and I'll send out another email tomorrow. Yeah. It actually gets Not my, through the calendar. It hit my calendar at 1.30. It says it's at 1.30 on, on that day. So we're all getting private tours. <laughs> <laughs> I'll make sure to notify Roger of that. Okay, thank you. That's all. <laughs> we'll clean out the cell. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> Anything else? That's all. Mrs. Vale. I have nothing further. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, I talked with Mr. Glass today about having Joel Daniels come and talk to us a couple of times a year, uh, sometime probably in October. Uh, and then again in the springtime to keep us up to date on what's going on and what people need to be concerned and aware of uh, on their properties, uh, just as a reminder. So yeah, that's a good uh, idea. Mr. Glass, you're going to take care of handling that. One. Yes, when it, whenever you decide it's fine. Sure. Mr. Francis. Thank you, Mr. President. Just a couple items. I'm not on Google time, I'm on Doodle. <laughs> So it's uh, October 7th, 10 a.m., right? Yes. Okay. Uh, second, uh, can't thank the people again for, for volunteering their services to the city uh, for appointments and accepting the appointments and, and then the approval of council uh, should just allow the, the uh, uh, citizens of the city to know that uh, we work together closely in, in our, 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 it's not that our approval is lightly, but uh, we, we trust uh, the leaders in City Hall enough to that when they present uh, individuals to us, uh, the individuals are, are, are those that care about the city and want to work with the city. So we just can't thank them enough. That's all I've got, Mr. President. Thank you. Mr. Brony. I have nothing to add tonight. Thank you. 
I just have a couple things. First of all, I was out at Ariel Foundation this afternoon. Uh, that new sidewalk going up to that, that uh, sculpture is absolutely phenomenal. Uh, and you can look down over the, the new uh, reflection ponds and, and uh, beautiful site. If you haven't been there, do it, but don't walk. Tomorrow they're going to seat it. Uh, so, so don't walk on the, uh, oh, can't go walk in tomorrow. The, okay. the newly seated area, but you can, there's a sidewalk going all the way up there. So you can just stay on the sidewalk and it is absolutely a gorgeous uh, view from that, from that, uh, from that site. And October the 3rd is the first Saturday of the month and, and there will be council members at SIPS at 8.30 in the morning for people in the community that would like to have a discussion with council. I uh, would also like to thank the media for being here this, this evening. Uh, WMBO, Mount Vernon News, Knox Pages, and, and Time Order for broadcasting this. And before we go, uh, before we adjourn, uh, we're going to move into executive session. There will be no action after the executive session. I will call on Mrs. Carl. Thank you, Mr. President. I move that we go into executive session to discuss land acquisition. Second. And moving and seconded that we go into executive session for the purpose of uh, discussing land acquisition. That takes a roll call vote. Mrs. Noel? Mrs. Carl? Yes. Mr. Hillier? Yes. Mrs. Siebel? Yes. Mr. Baroni? Yes. Mrs. Vail? Yes. Mr. Francis? Yes. We are in executive session. Sweet Adeline's International.